Are you looking to upgrade your dynamic effort weighting cycles for your squat, your bench press, or your deadlift? Well, this video, I'm gonna dive into the way you can use the dynamic effort method with these proven cycles to get more explosive, faster, improve your squat, bench, and deadlift, overall just be a more explosive athlete. Hey there, Brennan Spilly here from Thirst Gym, and today we're gonna to talk about dynamic effort cycles that work. And really quickly, the dynamic effort method is a way to train ideally your squat, bench, and deadlift are the primary three exercises you use this with, but to improve those exercises by training speed qualities so much more than training super heavy. Now this can be used for power lifters and strength athletes or even just general performance athletes or people that just love to train. The great thing about the dynamic effort method is incredibly quick in terms of how quickly you can train it and get through it during your training day, but ultimately the gains and the explosiveness that you can get from using these training cycles I'm gonna talk about today. This method was popularized by Louis Simmons of Westside Barbell. And what he found with his power lifters was that if they tried to train heavy all the time, they got beat up and ran down and their strength actually started to take a back seat. They actually started to get weaker from training too frequently too heavy. So he started using something called the dynamic effort method, which was using a decreased training load, but still applying as much force into the barbell. He then began to add bands and chains to slow the barbell down at the top so that they could actually accelerate through the full range of motion. Louis Simmons has already done all the work for us in terms of figuring out where those percentages need to be and how to implement them with these particular exercises. But more importantly, the way that you can do the sets and the reps can kind of vary depending upon what you want. I've kind of done that legwork using some from Louis straight from his book, Westside Barbell Book of Methods. Others are ones that I've experimented with athletes and clients that I've found that have also worked well. So these cycles that we're gonna talk about today are ways that you can wave your squat bench and deadlift training cycles to get the most out of them, but also just make sure that those cycles are not monotonous all the time and you're continuing to run the same cycle and over and over. They're gonna be proven to help you get stronger, more explosive, be faster, but at the same time, continue to use the dynamic effort method in your training and get the most out of it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with squat cycles. And I had to do a little bit of back reading through some of my cycles that I like to use. I don't have them all truly memorized off the top of my head because really there are a lot of different variations. So the first thing I'm gonna say is what I'm gonna talk about today is not the end all be all. I'm sure there's other people that have found other dynamic effort cycles that work incredibly well. And I also encourage you to experiment with your dynamic effort method. Again, as long as you're aiming for 0.8 to 1.0 meters per second, if you happen to use a velocity tracker uh, that you can use to track your bar speed, ideally that's what's the most important. And some of these are based off of those. Some of those are based of me being in the college setting and seeing what's kind of worked, what's worked with some of my athletes that are in high school and college, and then also just my power lifters as well. So again, it really depends on the profile of the athlete, but I'm gonna just walk you through what I like to program with the majority of my strength athletes and performance athletes. And so as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the squat first. Now, most waves for the squat are usually done in three and four week waves, and I really like three and four week waves for about all of the main movements, squat, bench, and deadlift, but generally I drift more towards the four week waves. That's how I tend to program most of my clients, that's how my billing works. It works well from that perspective. But again, you can again modify these as needed. So my most common and preferred dynamic effort cycle that I like is a four week cycle of doing 12 sets on week one, 12 sets on week two, 10 sets on week three, and 10 sets on week four, always doing sets of two or doubles. Now the percentages that you prefer to like to use is 40, 43, 47, and 50%. So those would be the ideal training cycle for the month that I like to use, regardless of using bands or chains. Now, some people also like to do the same thing with 50, 53, 57, 60. Make sure you understand that the goal here is speed. The barbell needs to move fast. So if you happen to be somebody that's not fast, that 50% might be too heavy. And for me, I found for the majority of my athletes, sticking in that 40 to 50% range is a safeguard, even when they're having a bad day, we're still gonna be in that velocity profile that we want to of speed strength. So that's my go-to squat cycle for most of my speed work. The other one that I like to do is 12, 12, 10, eight. So I take the same two weeks but then I go 10 and on the last one I end with eight. Still doing doubles, still doing that 40 to 50% range for more cases than not. These are for my athletes that need a lot of good quality first reps, but by the end of the training cycle, I can notice the fatigue is starting to set in. These might be people that are just training really hard, they've got a lot of life stress, maybe they're getting ready for a meet and it's waving down that way. 
I like to be able to pull back some of those sets. So not a major difference, but it is a way to limit things. And if you notice that people start to burn out by week four, it's a good safeguard to make sure that you get enough of the quality in, but you're not going to do too much to push them over the edge. The next cycle that I really like is a three week cycle. And essentially we're gonna do 10 sets, 10 sets, and eight sets, and again of two reps. But I really like to do this again for 40, 45, and 50%. Again, you can do 50, 55, and 60 if you really want to. This is a great three week wave that's just tried and true. It's kind of the old school west side way of doing it 50 55 60 with your bands and chains and then you can cycle that through through several three week cycles louis really liked the three week cycles he found that by basically unloading or that coming back to that week one every three weeks kept his lifters more fresh i also know that louis technically liked to put the heavy deadlift about every third week on his max effort day so if you line that up well with the way that you do this you can always put it on the way that you're gonna have the lighter speed work of the squat or on the heavier one depending on how you want to have your week set up so i understand kind of why he likes to do that as well and then the final one that i really like is a five by five in terms of my power lifters so for these athletes the reason i like the five by five is we still get around that 25 rep range which is kind of like that sweet spot that we're looking for here but what i like is to teach them to apply pressure more over the course of the set, right? So the first two reps will probably be kind of poppy, got a lot of speed. By the fifth, we start to burn out. And so I really like this for more speed endurance quality. So if I have lifters that are just incredibly snappy, I notice that they'll lose that speed quality towards the end of the sets. So by having less sets and focusing on grinding through that speed towards the end, typically they might fall off in that 0.8 to 1.0 meters per second area, but I'm teaching them to apply as much force as they can into the barbell while they're, while they're fatigued. And for those athletes that are incredibly fast, this tends to work really well to teach them how to continuously be fast even in a fatigued state. So that's a great method that I like to use. Just do five by five for a straight four weeks or three weeks. This is a personal preference. Um, and I also like it for my athletes as well. And the reason I like it for my athletes is it's just nice and consistent on time more so than anything else. The final squat waves that I have, and these are generally for my performance athletes, are eight by three and six by three waves. So basically, just like with my four week wave, how I had 12, 12, 10, 10 in terms of my wave, same thing here, we go eight, eight, six, six, because we do sets of three instead of sets of two. And it gets us right around those same numbers. If you really pay attention to what the numbers are, um, you're gonna have 24 for those two, first two that you normally would, and verse 20, now you're gonna have 18. But for what many of my athletes, when time is a factor, being able to do eight sets of three versus 12 is gonna save me four minutes of training time. That may not seem like a lot, but when you're working with an athlete for 60 minutes, that's a good chunk of change when it comes to your performance because you're probably also doing things like cleans and jumps and other things that you want to get in your program. Three reps is kind of that sweet spot between the five by five and the 12 by two. So you're kind of getting a blend of both worlds. You're still getting a quality first reps. You're still getting a little bit of speed endurance in there as well, but you're still gonna be training the dynamic effort method. So those are my preferred squat cycles. It's the one I've got the most options for, the one I feel like I've found kind of that sweet spot for all of my athletes and clients. And it's always my go-to one or my sets of two, but then I manipulate based upon the athlete or the lifter that I have in front of me. So give those squat cycles a try if you're used to the standard kind of goal standard that Louis has of three-week waves, some of those other waves might be ways to improve your squat cycles. All right, now we're gonna talk about some bench press dynamic effort cycles. Here's where I got a little bit of changes from my squat cycles. So this took me a little bit more of experimentation. I've also found that athletes can generally do better with even lower percentage of a bench press and still see results with the dynamic effort method. Me personally, I can get as low as sometimes 30% and still be in the ranges that I need to be in to benefit from the dynamic effort method. Uh, so experiment with this as much as you can. Find that pushing the bench press on the heavier side is generally probably gonna be harder to do and still maintain the velocity that you should. So the first bench cycle I wanna talk about is very similar to our squat cycle. We're gonna have a four week wave and we're gonna do 10 sets of three for the first two weeks and then eight sets of three for the next two weeks. 
This is kind of my gold standard bench press cycle, if I'm being honest. It's what I use with the majority of my clients and athletes. It's tried and true, and it works really well. Essentially, you're gonna, for the most part, do triples in your bench press. This is something that Louis found worked well for his lifters, and when he timed the reps, he found out that the three reps on the bench press for dynamic effort added up to about the same amount of time it would take for his lifters to get one heavy single in and a meet. So he's trying to replicate the time under tension there. And again, I really like the 40, 43, 47, 50 on the percents on this wave. But again, you can try the 50, 53, 57, and 60. I personally have found that it's too much, but I do know there are some people that have success with it. You can even try as low as 30%, which I haven't. Like I've mentioned, it's actually worked well for me, especially during stressful times of training, where I can decrease training load but still get the training adaptation that I want. So you've got a pretty big range here, and I would just kind of listen to your body and experiment with those percentages, but this cycle is pretty tried and true in terms of the sets and the reps that work. The next one is going to be something that I like to use for athletes that need more quality bar touches and repetition-based work. So the nice thing about the dynamic effort method is you get a lot of quality, quote unquote, first touches or first reps. The first set of every, or first rep, excuse me, of every set is gonna be the one that matters the most. Because in competition for like powerlifting, you're only gonna get one rep. The other ones don't matter. So by getting more quality first reps, you get more repetition of practice of those first reps. We can help you from a technique side. This isn't really that big of a deal for sport athletes. However, it is big for powerlifters. For this cycle, I actually like to drop down to that 35% range as my start point. It's still a four week cycle, but going 15 sets of three, 15 sets of three, 12 sets of three, and 12 sets of three. And again, this would be going 35, 38, 42, 45%, the absolute most. And those percentages drop just to account for the volume and amount of sets and reps that we're doing. Doing 45 reps for speed is a lot. That's 15 minutes if you do it on the timer, on the minute every minute of speed benching. If you're doing about an hour training session, literally 25% of your training session would be nothing but speed benching. Again, nothing wrong with that, but again, if technique and first reps are what you're after, this is gonna be the cycle for you. The next cycle is going to be one that's a little bit front loaded and the volume on the front and then tapers off towards the end. So we go with a 12, 10, 8, 8 in terms of our four week cycle. So we get a little bit more first reps on the front end when the percentages are generally lower. And then as we progress throughout the cycle, we go 12, 10, 8, 8. Basically, it's gonna end up around the same as our first training cycle that we had, but you're gonna capitalize off the lower percentage of getting more technical work, and as the weights increase, you're just gonna to continue to focus on your rate of force development and your speed of the barbell. There's nothing fancy about this cycle. It's just a derivative that I've used for athletes that I feel like I wanna give them more quality first reps early on in training cycles before we go to my standard training cycle. Then we've got three week waves, which are pretty common again with benching and, and pretty much west side barbell based work. And I like doing a very similar thing that I do with my squat, uh, 40, 45, 50 in terms of my percentages and 10 sets of three, 10 sets of three and eight sets of three, kind of a gold standard. And then the last one would be a 12 sets of three, 10 sets of three, eight sets of three. Again, this is more for the athlete that can handle a little bit more volume on the front end maybe like a female or a lighter lightweight male because you can get more quality first reps at the beginning of those training cycles. Now, for my athletes, just like with the squat, I have two training cycles that I like here. I really love the five by five for athletes for the bench press. The time under tension for me just works much better for those athletes. If they're having to do any kind of explosive pushing, usually they're pushing people out of the way multiple times or we're trying to just get a little bit more time under tension with our speed work. And the five by five method is time efficient. Again, about five minutes of work of the 60 minute training session, we're still getting our 25 quality reps. You can wave it from 40 to 50% for a four week wave, for a three week wave, and still get a lot of quality benefits out of it. And it's not really gonna affect anything in terms of your training volume. So this is a great secondary bench day training cycle. The other one is the six by three. And again, I like doing that again for all three or four weeks for my athletes. This lets me get more quality first touches if I really want to. There's less total volume. This works great for end season athletes. We bring that timer tension down a little bit. We're still getting the speed qualities that we want. 
but again, we're still getting done in five or six minutes, but we're decreasing our volume as well because we've got 18 reps versus 25 with the five by five method. So you kind of have to take a look at your athlete that you're working with and understand where they're at. If you need a little bit more volume, those really high set ones work well, not very realistic in the college setting, but can be doable. But the five by five and six by three are fantastic for athletes. So these are the speed cycles that I really like for bench press. Again, tried and true for the majority of them. They work really well. And like I said, I've had a lot of success, especially on the athlete side of thing, which isn't really talked about when it comes to speed benching. All right, the last cycle we're gonna talk about is the speed deadlift cycle. Now of the three exercises, the speed deadlift is certainly probably the most variety based speed cycles you can have. And they're generally also the most complicated. And the reason being is that the deadlift is generally more taxing, but also the way Louie programmed it via West Side was basically doing singles. Now you can do some different derivatives here, and we're gonna talk about that. But understand that the speed deadlift is really after the technical aspect of getting the quality first reps, even more so than the squat and the bench press, kind of like we talked about earlier. So these again are cycles that I've used, tried and true, that I really like, and I've got some here for athletes, and preferred more so than powerlifters. So for my power lifters, if I'm doing a three week wave, I really like doing 12 sets of one, 10 sets of one, and eight sets of one at 50, 55, and 60%. And that gives us a lot of solid touches on terms of our barbell lifts. But you also gotta remember that in the classic dynamic effort method with our power lifters, Louis like to speed squat and speed deadlift on the same day, but on max effort day, you don't squat and deadlift. So keep that in mind that Louis take into account that you're already doing dynamic effort work on the squat. So by the time the deadlifts come, you're probably kind of fatigued. And he kind of took this into account when he was basically making one doing singles, but two also decreasing the amount of sets that you're doing. So one that you're not deadlifting all the time forever, but also that you already exhausted some of those motor units that you're using to squat. So again, that's kind of my classic tried and true speed wave for three weeks. My four week one that's tried and true is 10 by one, 10 by one, eight by one, eight by one for a four week cycle, 50, 53, 57, and 60. Or if you really wanna push the weights a little bit, you have a really fast athlete that can get away with this, 50, 55, 60, 65. And that's again, a little bit on the heavy side, but I've seen it work well with many athletes. So you've got some options there in terms of how you want to do the loading. And the deadlift I've found when you can load a little bit better, and a little bit heavier, just because you have that concentric only action, you're not really doing anything with the eccentric, so your ability to get sore isn't as bad, but also getting that bar moving, it's a little bit harder from the floor, but once you get going and you wedge in the position hard, usually that rep is incredibly quick. And so it's gonna mimic like a vertical jump so, or something like that, you know, an athletic based movement. So generally I've found that going heavier works better. Um, but again, experiment with the percentages that you have. Now, when it comes to my athletes, something I really like is doing a flat eight by two for three weeks. So we could do an eight by two at around 50%, 55%, 60%, and just wave that weight up. And then I would have a down week on the fourth week where I usually do five by two or four by two. Usually I pull the volume down almost by half or give or take. And I try to make sure that as long as it's staying in the range of speed that I want. Usually I try to have them pull back down so it's moving faster. But that's a pretty classic way to get through this because if you're doing doubles, one, you can go one rep, two rep, just make sure they're not bouncing the barbell off the floor. But two reps is not gonna take that much longer than one. So one, you can double the amount of volume that you're getting, but with athletes, they're not as technical as power lifters, so usually that second rep is better than the first rep because they're gonna land in the optimal position that I want them to be in to pull the barbell. So they get some technical work on that first rep. The second rep is even more technical work because it's gonna be dialed in because they should land in a good starting position with the barbell. Now, the other one that I really like, and this is using triples, and this is definitely not as common. This is what I would consider a high volume in terms of the speed strength side of things, but it's worked well for younger athletes or athletes that are learning how to do the dynamic effort method and produce force. And that's doing a 10 by three, an eight by three, a six by three, and then a down week after that, which might be like four by three or five by three. Um, but using a 40, 45, 50%. So kind of going with our classic squat and 
bench-based approach, but using it with the deadlift with much higher volume. And so with my athletes, when I do this, generally if I'm doing this, I'm not having them squat beforehand. I'm probably having an athlete that trains two or three days a week, so they have a dedicated day towards just a squat movement, and then a dedicated day towards more of just a pulling motion. So knowing that, I know that I can increase the volume because they've not squatted heavy prior to that, and that they're gonna probably be able to recover. But we're still gonna pull the volume down just a little bit in terms of the load with the percentages. So the volume of reps is higher, but the weight is gonna come down to try to help count and counter that out. So again, very high in terms of amount of reps, but it gives them, again, a lot of first touches, lots of technical proficiency, but of the ability to produce as much force as possible for that speed strength curve. And this works great for hex bar deadlifting. It just does. It works on the rate of force, pushing through the floor, going vertically, creating that vertical displacement, and creating as much power through the floor. And again, this is kind of like my go-to thing for many of my athletes here. And then that fourth week, you just unload or deload. You could take the bands off. You could skip the exercise entirely. You can just four by three, five by three, and just technical work to let the body rest and recover before you would do a new training cycle. So that is all of my deadlift cycles. Again, there's not as many, but there's a little bit more nuances to the deadlift and depending upon how you're doing with athletes or a power lifter, kind of gives you some different approaches there. All right, that's gonna wrap up our dynamic effort video today and the cycles that I like to use. Before we go, I just wanna make sure that I remind you that the goal here is to move the bar as fast as possible and get done in a decent amount of time. You shouldn't be resting 90 to 120 seconds between your dynamic effort work. You really want to focus on resting about 45 to 60 seconds at most, maybe even as low as 30 seconds for something like your deadlift. The goal here is to be able to fatigue the motor unit recruitment that you're having to use for these exercises. So usually your, your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings, uh, your chest, your shoulders, the goal is to get that fatigue and build that up over the course of the sets, but you still wanna to try to improve rate of force development. And so the goal here, again, with the dynamic effort method is to be between 0.8 and 1.0 meters per second if you happen to be measuring your bar velocity. Regardless of whether you're a power lifter or a performance-based athlete, the dynamic effort method has been proven to work in terms of improving rate of force development. And again, whether you're using bands or chains also does not matter. These are cycles, again, that I've used with lifters, so I tried to break it up. So if you are a lifter, you've got the cycles that I think are probably gonna work best for you in the way that you compete. If you happen to be a performance athlete, I talked about some cycles that generally work better for you guys because your demands that you're gonna have on the field, court, or what have you are a little bit different than strength sport athletes. Regardless, the, the system works. There's no doubt about that. There's no reason you shouldn't have it in your performance program at some point throughout the year, regardless whether you're a conjugate person or you're you know, a, a sport athlete that just likes to squat, bench, and deadlift. Focusing on rate of force development is gonna help you to some degree, and these cycles have worked for dozens and dozens of people that I've worked with. For extra information, I'm gonna link the dynamic effort video that I have below talking about the whole dynamic effort lower and upper so you can figure out how to program those for strength sport athletes and how I might go about that. But also I highly encourage you to pick up Louis Simmons Barbell Westside Barbell Book of Methods. You're gonna find a ton of information there about the dynamic effort method and why he uses it if you're looking for further resources just on the method in general. The other place I would finally suggest that you check out is any kind of VBT work done by Brian Mann or Will Fleming. These are two people I know personally and they are ahead of the game when it comes to VBT, either for weightlifting, powerlifting, or performance. They cover it all and you'll be able to ensure that you're not only knowing more about velocity-based training, but why the velocity of 0.8 to 1.0 meters per second works best for these exercises in helping you be a better athlete or a better lifter. So again, I appreciate you checking in for today's video. Do me a favor before you leave, hit the like button if this happened to help you. Leave a comment if there's something that you took away or something you want me to cover in a future video or something regarding the dynamic effort method. And again, if you have anybody that uses the dynamic effort method and just looking to branch out on their squat cycles, bench cycles, deadlift cycles, I'd appreciate it if you share this with them. I'd really appreciate it. Again, thanks for checking in and I'll see you at the next video.